No matter how much you complain about the sun and it burns and it's too bright and it's inconvenient, it is still the source of all life and necessary for our existence. That is how, at the end of the day, I've felt about myself and I express it in different ways. That is what the Madame Laneverse is. The Laneverse is obviously a universe, but there is no solar system without the star, the sun, which is the Madame, me. So welcome to today's Thanksgiving vlog, log. And I'm uh, getting to some things. I try to keep my ting brief. I always say that. <laughs> keep it under 10 minutes. So, in the spirit of things, I am going to hit you with these tarot cards I pulled. And just being completely honest in the spirit of the cards that I pulled. Because what is the divine message of what I got going on? So that'll be the setup for everything else, right? So I did a three card pull, bottom of the deck. We got three of swords, six of swords in reverse, page of pentacles, and pretty much set the tone and affirmed everything as... The Sun card, which is at the bottom of the deck. So, the message is, um, I have been in a constant, or I was in a constant cycle of trying to get free of my past and my upbringing. And decades, generations of any and everything that's been tied to my bloodline, my identity as a black American woman, and all of that, just the perpetual nature of others defining me and then trying to convince me that I don't know who I am and that I need to listen to them about who I am. And if I don't, I'm wrong and everything's wrong with my life and blah, 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 blah. Short introduction. Some adjust, some that like all of this is readjustments. So it's a new chapter. It's like every other couple of days in the chapter. But I mean, life is full of chapters. It's stepping stones. We're constantly changing and evolving. But positioning myself as the operations artist. Because I do business things in the cannabis industry. And I enjoy it. I enjoy doing business. But at the end of the day, I am a natural born artist. I want to draw stuff. I want to make stuff. And... As when I first started this channel and it was called Madam versus Muse was this dichotomy of these different identities and interests and me figuring out who I am choosing to be given all that I was born with, given the environment, the times, just any and everything that has influence attempt to influence me control me me making my own decisions everything has been me trying to establish this balance of being in the system the matrix being a part of the world we have to do that renegotiating re-evaluating my understanding of money and making a living and working and business and what that means interacting on a, um, I guess, micro versus macro scale of what's happening physically around me, who I'm encountering on the internet, wherever they are in the world, and 
just this battle of identities of where I came from, people who knew me, my family and all of that, believing that who they knew was me and it's not. I, at the end of the day, gave you who you wanted so that I could get what I needed. But no one can tell me who I am because I'm not unconscious. I'm smart until it's time to be smart. I'm smart until you realize that I'm so beyond you that you just try to tell me that I don't make sense and that I'm wrong to make up for your egoic, like your bruised ego for whatever reason, because I mean, at the end of the day, this is my upbringing with my parents. And really things came to a head this past Saturday where I had moved back once again into their household because I'm like, I wanted to give myself two weeks to just focus. All right, I'm door dashing. I get that money each day. All right, I got $100. Pour that into my business. Let me focus on finally getting things straight with my service business, making those connections. You know, I have the foundation straight. Let me capitalize on these connections and these relationships I'm making. So I have clients, so I'm getting paid. And let me build on my art and make products and build that out and get established on who I am showing up as. And so I have found things have come full circle. This video, uh, we're probably 15. I don't want it to be more than 20 minutes. But things have come full circle in that 20, tail end of 2018, I had moved in with friends. And there was like an undercurrent of my intuition where it wasn't saying that I shouldn't move in with them, but it was like, lifelong things where I'm like, I keep feeling pulled to these people, but I don't think they're right for me, but it's like, I feel like I'm supposed to have this connection. And shit went awry when, as it goes, things are popping for me, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm getting fucked the way I want to, I'm smoking, I'm just chilling. I got things in order. I'm building out a system. I'm making plans. And motherfuckers just start making up problems and turning me into a problem because they can't get themselves together. So I was pissed at them motherfuckers. But just, I kept revisiting. Why am I so pissed at these people? Why was I continually, like, what is going on here? 20, 2020 roll around. Or no, I did shrooms, summer 2019. Started to feel things. Like the fury. Did shrooms again, 2020. And that's when I actually sat with, my parents were abusing me as a kid. And because it wasn't physical, it was insidious, it was financial, emotional, mental control. I can't say, I can't talk how I want to talk. I can't dress how I want to dress. I can't have my hair how I want to have it. I can't hang out with the people I want to. I can't listen to the music I want to. I can't say this. I can't speak in this tone. I can't do this this way. I can't do that that way. And... You're going to college. You're going to this school. You're going to have a government job. You're doing this. You can't do this. You need to believe in God. You need to be Christian. You need to be this. And we're going to shame you and berate you and humiliate you as much as fucking possible and pour as much fucking fear about the fact that we are violent towards you. We're going to threaten you with violence and threaten to push you out the house into the world and keep her also reminding you that this is the way the world is that the world is so there's nothing out there for you other than us and that ending up showing up in these dysfunctional relationships and dysfunctional friendships dysfunctional intimate relationships dysfunctional just fucking weird random bitches approaching me with 
such utter hostility when I'm fucking existing. Then when I communicate that to a friend, this nigga tries to put it on me that I somehow created the situation for some stranger to talk to me crazy. So everything pretty much came to a head this past Saturday because I, like I said, I moved in, ended up staying a month. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Fine. Let me get all my shit straight. I'll just gather everything. So I'm leaving the country. And I'm, because then I had deal with, had to deal with fears about being in another country by myself and feeling like I didn't have anybody else to rely on. So pretty much got myself to get over that. And it's like, okay, you know what? Maybe not Mexico solo, solo but I can do Japan. I'm familiar with Japan. Japan's safe. You know what? I can do Thailand. Thailand is the ultimate goal. Weed, good food, beaches, nice people, cheap cost of living. Why the fuck not? So, my father's retired, and it's like every day this nigga, that, like both of my parents are, narciss are narcissists. They're both narcs. And my brother died in 2013 of, he was HIV positive, which was supposed to be a secret, and... On paper, he died, died of kidney failure and complications with pneumonia. That ties into this very soon. So every day, I'm minding my own business. And my narcissistic father just creates problems out of nothing. I'm trying to soft boil some motherfucking eggs. And this nigga's bothering me. I am 35 and you are trying to tell me how to boil water. You are commanding me on how to do shit. Then you catch an attitude with me because I tell you no. And then you, like, this perpetual obsession where they're stuck with wanting me to be a kid because they have no actual fucking control or power over themselves in their own fucking reality. How do you have at least a net worth of a million dollars? You just bought a half million dollar house. You spend money on all this shit, but you're still fucked. And even that was like messing with my understanding of money because everything about them is, well, we care about you and we love you and we raise you. You gave me money. That is not a substitute for all the fuckery that you've done. Thus, I ended up in these abusive relationships, these dysfunctional friendships, because I was taught that it's okay to treat me how the fuck you want, as long as you say you love me and you give me money. That's a fucking whore. So, Saturday comes along, I've been driving for four fucking hours dashing, got my hundred dollars, I'm feeling great, park my car, go in the house, this nigga start blowing up my fucking phone about I need to change where I park because you can't fucking drive. You can't pull the fuck out of your own goddamn driveway. So I'm supposed to accommodate your inefficiencies after my fucking back is hurting from also holding in so much anger and just being pissed. And the entire drive, you know, my and. I started dashing. I was enjoying myself. I like talking to people. I like finding out about new restaurants. I like going to different neighborhoods. As soon as I go in this house, I'm not getting, I'm ending days where I'm not even getting fucking tips. I'm making less money when I move to this house with these motherfuckers. Like even I'm chilling outside after election day. And I'm smoking. I'm on the deck doing yoga. This nigga randomly, randomly fucking decides that he needs to run the leaf blower and he blowing it in my fucking face. Then when I feel some type of way, my mother decides, oh, what's wrong with you? Get back here. You need to talk to me. Like y'all fucking suck as parents. I mean, given your fucked up upbringing, you, like you convinced yourself that spending money was the solution. It was not because you 
like you got so much money go to fucking therapy fix yourselves deal with the fact that your parents didn't fucking want you and that's what you brought to me is you didn't want me or my motherfucking brother because you were bothered by the light inside of us so goddamn much especially for the bitch to be a fucking pastor you're disturbed y'all are fucking like they have this darkness in them that's so fucking disturbed by me and my brother and you fucking killed my brother how because this nigga was had hiv for quite some time and didn't fucking tell a soul ain't have a dime didn't have no health insurance and you know what he chose to die rather than ask them motherfuckers for help that's a choice that he made, but that's a fucking choice on these motherfuckers who are constantly concerned about looking like losers to the family when you're not concerned about the fact that you fucking are abusive and then you go out in the world and tell a completely different story and you want to put on appearances. And then because I'm not appearing the way that you want me to, you decide to tell everybody that I just mysteriously have head issues and you decide to publicly tell people that I struggle with that I struggle with mental illness and you decide to put that shit in a fucking book and then try to make yourself out to be the hero when y'all are the motherfuckers that caused this problem so I'm having these discussions my time while I'm Dashing is being spent venting and being upset as opposed to me focused on my fucking mission. And once again, I moved to that house with them motherfucking friends. And again, I'm on a mission. Y'all are causing drama over nothing. And then just come up with every excuse to not have a level-headed conversation with me. But I'm the problem because you're fucked in the head. And because my light is so bright and you won't acknowledge the fucking darkness in you and you won't do nothing about it, of course I'm the problem. Of course I'm the villain to a bitch that don't deal with this shit. And that's exactly what came to head on fucking Saturday when this nigga calling my phone bugging me about goodbye, click. I'm on the phone with the bitch I call a fucking mother. She started pressing me about, oh, where's my rent money? It's buffering, bitch. What the fuck do you want? So then my father, the asshat that he is with, that's why you're balding, you got bowel problems. Like, y'all have health issues. She has hypertension and back problems and still struggles with issues with your spine. You, you can't put two and two together that your shitty fucking sense of self is perpetuating your problem. No, it's everybody else. So, he comes in the house, bitching. Oh, you can leave. Okay, bye. I go, start packing my shit at, I don't know, 9 o'clock at night. So then my mother come in the room. I don't know what this cunt think that she's capable of, which is nothing when it comes to my realm of existence. But then she start pressing me, and I, I'm just done. I'm just done. You're catching everything. Don't, but I've been beyond respectful than what you deserve because you weren't qualified to parent me. You're the physical conduit for my black ass to get here. The little ass gifts that y'all got that you can't fucking figure out what to capitalize off of. Give it to me. My brother's gone. Okay. Ancestral energy. Give it the fuck to me. I'm getting the fuck up out of here because I got shit to do. So she bugging and... I yelled at her. You're enabling his bullshit. Because you know he's narcissistic. In the same way that he was fucking treating you. You suddenly got a backbone. And then you see him doing the same shit to me. And you don't fucking do anything. So then she gets pissed at me. And decides to put her hands on me. And I guess she's surprised. Once again. You know who I show you. I, you know who I want you to know. And if you ain't fucking acting accordingly, it's a, it's a decoy. You think my size? You think because I ain't from the streets of Baltimore that I'm not going to defend myself against 
fuckery because I always expect a bitch who less than me to suddenly try to incriminate me when I am defending myself. I be the villain. I be the villain if that's the case. Fuck you. That's, that's just what it is. She put her hands on me. You think you toss me around, you're going to fuck up my glasses, grabbing at my face, trying to grab my throat. You're going to think you pin me down with your fucking knee on my chest with all that fat you're going to pour, push onto me. So you're trying to suffocate me? Here's what I got that you don't. Legs that work. Kick that cut the fuck up off me. And I let her gather herself. I got to save my energy to get my shit to fucking move and to get back on the road and start dashing for some fucking cash. Then this bitch follow me all around the house thinking on some Drake shit that you going to be on some round twos against a fucking Kendrick, the king, the fucking son. Constantly thinking you going to agitate me. You lost. And I'm not, I'm not pressed. To beat the shit out your old ass. You throwing my shit around. You acting a fucking fool. And then what? Gonna go to church on Sunday and preach some bullshit. And try to pray to Father God after your ass gonna fucking call my father. And then lie to him and say that I attacked you. Right after you was working on your bullshit ass sermon, huh? Alright, I was on your phone. You was paying for it. All right, click. Got me the Mint Mobile. Oh, you pressed me for your phone. Bitch, get the fuck out of here. I've been using this shit. It's my phone now. You a goddamn Indian giver. I know. Politically incorrect. But whenever they come up with another burning term for it, you give me shit, and then when you get in your little fee, your little fee, your dysfunctional fee-fees, then you want to take shit back. That's not a gift. You constantly saying you want to help me do stuff, but as soon as it, it's a power play, as soon as you feel threatened and bothered by me that I'm standing up because I'm sick of your shit, oh, now you need just your stuff back. Your stuff that you gave to me. So yeah, I'm not, I'm done with them motherfuckers. And once I got the bread, Legally changing my name. I don't want to fuck all to do with them. Really, this is a decision that I wish I could go back in time and tell 18-year-old me. It wouldn't even made a difference if I went, you know what, fuck it. Like, they paid me to go to college. This is all my personal reparations from these bitches who suck the dick of white delusion and partake in the system. And especially my mother hemming and hawing about black power and black. That's all you got is this. You don't do shit for the community, but run your fucking mouth. And then make sure that you're not around the poors. <laughs> oh, let me give the poors some coins. But I'm going to make sure I'm in my, in my six-figure job. And I'm shitty with my little attitude problems for everybody. I'm going to tell everybody my daughter did these things. And potentially lie to people about... She attacked me even though I'm constantly trying to fight somebody at 60 years old. You may as well call me Lo Langan Paul. Because I had to... It's not like I was fighting a champ anyway. I was fighting a fucking chump. So fuck that bitch and fuck that nigga who fuck her. I am grateful for me on this Thanksgiving. And I'm grateful for... Everything that I'm cleansing this day, this week, this moment, because I got shit to do. The video is just evidence, is my story, because these motherfuckers are easily embarrassed. So everybody gets the truth, not the delusions that two mo crazy motherfuckers who won't heal themselves to the depth that is required of them. Y'all gonna fucking die. I don't want y'all money. Give that to some body so you can lie and put in your fucking bitch ass obituary about all this shit that you did other than fix your shitty attitude and the darkness and your demons that consume you. So, 
I don't give a fuck about that. I'm done with them niggas. The whole family, it don't make a lick of difference to me. I do don't know y'all niggas, them niggas, whatever. You, we got to start from scratch. But the, them, that's the environment that made them. So, slate clean. I got what I needed from this bloodline. That's all that matters. There's no going back. So in the spirit of that, I got Lanaverse Works, which is my strategy consultancy. And why I'm the operations artist? Because I make art out of solving strategic operations business problems, specifically in the cannabis industry, but I help anybody else. I got the Indo Kanban, coloring book is in progress. I'm working on that shit. Ugh. Um, uh, what I made a puzzle. So it's a jigsaw puzzle. I'm designing the cloak. By the time you know you see this, it's available. All this is on the endocanban.com website. Link in the description. Laneverse works. Link description. If you know you want to support the realm of the Laneverse, head to laneverse.com. Send me some ducats. Support in any way. Get me connected with who I need to. Like right now, you know what? I'm in a, I guess this is a motel. Yeah, I'm in a motel. And potentially going to be sleeping in my car for a night or two. And seeing how things pan out with, you know, me getting these clients, me getting this plane ticket to MJ BizCon. And all I can have is faith in the divine, which is myself. And keep shining bright and keep doing what I came here to do. Because it's just like this awareness now of looking back on my life of why I developed social anxiety. Because I'm doing my own thing and some weird bitch makes problems. And it brings other people and then arranges some story that... I'm the problem because you're too fucking stupid to look your ugly ass in the mirror and deal with your shit without involving anybody else, which is why I've been on my own and solo all of my life. And I used to feel some type of way about it because again, the cronies, the bots, the Smiths, whatever you want to call these muggles that decide they need to be in my business, which they're not qualified because you're trash. I'm up here. I am the sun. You're a roach. Evolve in your next lifetime, maybe. But I've always known who I am and what I want to do and what I like. And there's always some corny little mother roach bitch involving themselves and pulling my attention and trying to get me to focus on insecurities that they made up that I'm supposed to care about like I'm cool with being alone because it's not I don't believe it's a long term thing because I've been around people who are up here who are where I'm at and beyond I don't need to envy you I don't need to be jealous because I'm home. And yeah, I've been in environments where this bitch, what, Kezia and fucking pro group, you making more money than me, you established, but you gotta be a cunt to me. You getting all this attention, you know, you riding Chris Doe's dick to get where you need to get. So why you being a cunt to me? I, I don't know, maybe it's your Jamaican, the mud in your Jamaican ancestry or some bullshit that got you fucked up. So, because I guess at this point, I just see it as bitches who be acting like that off a of rip, off of nothing. It's because you know I'm going to surpass you. I already did. You could just get the fuck out the way and not talk to me. That's just the thing with anybody who's negative, who brings any type of animosity, any type of bullshit. You not focused on nothing of importance. And even if you think you are, 
it really ain't that fucking important because who the fuck is Kezia? That bitch going to die trash. Me, I'm forever. I'm humanity. I'm legacy. I'm the earth. I'm the galaxy. I'm the universe. I'm everything. I'm not pressed over having kids because everything that I'm destined to make is going to outlive me. Is going to be on here for antiquity. That's what the motherfuckers be feeling. So because the only thing you know how to do is breed. You don't know how to really make nothing. You, don't know, you can't make no fucking classics. Okay, you a Drake. You a Drake. Like, let's be fucking for real. You ain't culture, bitch. <laughs> that's, you know, that's... Because I think that's what's even crazy. It's not even that crazy, but it's like what further set me on this was... Kendrick dropped DNX last Friday. The prophet, the truth. We function in truth. We function in culture. We got the vision. There is no, I have no competition. I'm not concerned with what nobody doing. Because I got shit that I got to catch up on doing. That I know is going to pop off. And if it don't, I'm going to learn from it, and the next thing going to pop up. And if that don't, the next thing will. But the fact of the matter is, is my shit be, has popped up in the past before I got to this point. So the only enemy that I got is anybody who makes a fucking problem, who decides to be a bitch in my comments, a bitch in my ear, a bitch to everybody but the bitch they see in the fucking mirror because all this, nyeh, 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 you could be making something of yourself. But what you doing? Trying to be a distraction to me. Is that the only way you know how to be relevant? Is to be a fucking barnacle on the ship of greatness? Pathetic. <laughs> so, like I said, hit them links down below. I just pushed the timeline, but it's just like, you know what? I wanted to get everything out. Air everything out. It don't make a lick of difference to me if anybody watched the whole thing. Maybe it's engaging, maybe it's not. I don't fucking care. I gotta speak my truth. I gotta stand 10 toes down on business. <laughs> but... It's goofy. It's nonsense. All these motherfuckers gonna die and who wanna talk about you? Other motherfuckers who just gonna die and disappear and keep breeding so that we have to share the earth. It's partially why I don't wanna have no kids because I don't want y'all nasty bitches near my flesh. I already I deal with it. This is my last time on this planet. Uh, just, I'm done. But I, I could change my mind and y'all might be gifted with the privilege of my progeny, but I mean, I guess with the life I'm building, they gonna be around motherfuckers who deserve to be around. They ain't gonna be around no trash like I've been. Born into a cesspool, crawled the fuck out, being the sun as I was born to be. So, videos still coming out first and eighteenth of each month. She know I gotta make another one. Come well, December first, there might not be a video. I put I put it out on the second or third, maybe at the latest, the end of next week. But that's where I'm at. Thanks for tuning in. If you was feeling it. If you aren't, <laughs> thanks for the watch time. Thanks for promoting my message. Thanks for doing your job, little peon, <laughs> of making sure I'm known. And that I'm rent-free in your brain. Go bitch to somebody about me. They gonna love me. 